and welcome back to another doll custom. Today we're going to be making a nymph, more specifically a river slash forest nymph. I was inspired by Hercules, the Disney one, not the one with the rock, and decided to do some research. Nymphs are regarded as divine spirits or deities and are associated with fertility in nature. They are usually depicted as young, beautiful women and are often found in mountainous regions, in forests or by rivers. Art throughout history has depicted nymphs in more of a human-like state, but I much preferred the cartoony slash fantasy twist Hercules gave them, so I'll be basing my doll off the three nymphs you see in the film. It's been a while since I filmed my last doll journey, and this time I had a hell of a lot more choice. I decided to use this Gulia Yelp doll. She has a grey sort of skin tone which added to the cartoony theme, and I thought it wasn't colour restrictive. I think you can put pretty much any colour next to grey and it would look good. She was, however, missing an arm, so I thought I'd steal this Frankenstein arm and try to incorporate the different colours somehow, maybe with a story or a theme. And as always with doll customs, the first step generally is to prep the body. So by doing this you remove the head by soaking it in some hot water, remove the face with some acetone, and remove the hair by cutting the plugs close to the scalp. I then use a flat nose plier to scrape away the inside of the head to pull the plugs of hair out. I personally find this to be the easy way, though other doll customisers do cut the head open and do it that way, but this is just the way I find easiest with less amount of faff. For the Frankie arm, I had previously discovered on my own accord that the plastic used for the bodies really does not like acetone, it quite literally melts away, so I used a nail buffing block to file off the factory paint. And once the head was prepped, it was time for the hair. I had already decided a light green would be nice, so I bought this nylon hair in the shade Siren's Tears from Retro Dolls UK. And from the same supplier, I also purchased this UV colour changing hair. Both the blue and the purple go really well with the green, and I thought this would give the hair a little bit more pizzazz. Time scale, the rear it took me a few days because I was working, but once I was happy there was enough hair on the girl's head, I filled it with Fabri-Tac glue and set her aside to dry for a few hours. Once the hair was dry, I boil washed it to tame the poof, let it dry, styled it, boil washed again, and set the hair by rinsing it with cold water. The hair usually takes a day to dry naturally, so I left her alone to work on the flowers that I was going to put on the body. I thought I'd try and make an armature to attach the flowers to so that I didn't have to glue the flowers to the head and ruin the hair, but the wire I got was just way too thick, even after I tried widening the plugs on the head with an exacto knife. So I decided that eventually I would just have to glue them onto the head. With that in mind, I moved on and decided to paint some details on the flower, because they looked pretty simple. I added some silver trims, some different coloured trims, some diamantes, and also some glow-in-the-dark paint. When it came to the body, my original plan was to cover the body in flowers, using both epoxy and the paper ones that I bought, but I wasn't sure if she would lose her body shape and end up looking like Vanessa Vanji Matea, so at first I thought I'd just try and use epoxy. I really wasn't feeling it, the leaves kept getting smooshed because the body was just really difficult to work around because I wasn't exactly building up some giant modification, I was only trying to add some small details and they weren't coming out at all how I imagined, so I thought it was best to scrape it all off and start again the next day. And the next day it worked a lot better. I kept it more simple as I thought this way I could just paint on the details to add dimension rather than trying to sculpt them in, seeing as I'm not very experienced with epoxy sculpt yet. I was really excited for the face up on this doll as it was my first time using MSC and I was also excited about creating layers to the face. If you want a full list of materials that I used for this custom there's a list in the description box below. I have used watercolour pencils before, but they were cheap generic ones from Poundland, so they were absolute crap. I invested in some Faber-Castell ones, and they're a much higher quality, and they sharpen a lot better too. 
I'm gonna go ahead here and apologize for the angle that the face off was done at. I appreciate it. it's really awkward and it's something that I'm going to be working on in future videos so just hang tight for this one and I'm sure it'll be better next time. Remember to wear a respirator mask when spraying MSC as it's highly toxic. I had a little bit of a reaction to it even though my face was mostly covered with the mask but I do have sensitive skin. I also recommend wearing gloves and to roll back any sleeves because you really don't want to breathe any of this stuff in. It does linger for a few minutes after spraying whilst it's still wet but once it's dry it's fine. I also recommend you dry it in a well ventilated area. I placed it on my window which was slightly open and I also closed the curtains for good measure. <laughs> This completes your health and safety PSA. Please enjoy the rest of the video. The next thing for me to do was to finish the body. I painted it using PBO acrylic paint, doing only one coat because that's all it ended up needing. And then I went back to add silver leaf veins for some details. The last few things to do was to add some details like eyelashes, some flowers to the body, and then also some pills and diamantes. <laughs> For the flowers, I decided as a last minute thing to put some glow in the dark paint on them. I did these in the same colour as the flower head piece, and then I also went back in with some pastels to give them a little bit more dimension and some more detail. I ended up using a glue gun to stick the flowers to the body as it's probably stronger than Mod Podge. It was a bit messy because the glue melts and dries so fast, but it's fairly easy to clean up. I used both adhesive pearls and diamantes, 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 to stick to the epoxy parts. I strengthened these with a fine brush and some Mod Podge. 